Uh, I'll talk a little bit about client server model. Uh, we need to have this information so we can start programming, uh, connecting to the internet through programs rather than just as users. So client server model describes uh, all, most of the interactions or many interactions on the, over the network on the internet between machines. So uh, this is not you know, completely all-inclusive. Sometimes you're talking peer-to-peer, -peer, but client server is a very common model for communication on the internet. So client server model, you got, uh, you got these two processes running, a client on one machine, a server on another machine. The server is guarding some resource, whatever the resource might be. So say it's a print server, right? Then the client might want to print something. It sends that thing to the server, says, please print, sends a request to the server, please print. And the resource would be the printer itself. And the server prints it or doesn't, you know, and sends a response, says, look, I printed it, right? Or a web server, right? The client sends a request to the web server, says, server, give me the contents of this web page. The resource is going to be the contents of the web pages. And the server gets the resource, sends it back in the response to the client, and so on. So this client-server model is a very sort of common uh, protocol, common model uh, that, that's used on the internet. So the server manages the resource, whatever it is, and the client uh, makes requests. So the server accepts requests, it waits for requests, it has to sit there listening, waiting for requests, and then it sends responses that have the results of whatever the request is. Now, <clears throat> interconnections. Uh, the client and the server communicate over a connection on the internet. And the socket, this term socket, a socket is the endpoint of a connection. So if there's a connection between a client and a server, they're going to be two sockets, right? One for the client on its end and one for the server on its end. So, there's, uh, so they'll be listening to sockets. And this term socket, we're going to use this because once we start writing network code, we're going to be using creating sockets, opening sockets, closing sockets, and so on. So socket is really a programming concept for uh, how you're going to connect on the network. Now a port, we've already defined a port. Again, it's a 16-bit integer that identifies a process. The reason why we bring it up again is because a socket is really uh, associated with an IP address, the host that the socket is, that the process is running on, and the port. So if you take an IP address and a port together, that's, uh, a socket is always associated with an IP address and a port, okay, uh, and with, that has active communication going over it. So ports and servers. So, uh, so in this picture, we've got two machines. On the left, you've got the, the client machine. On the right, you've got the server machine. Now actually notice that on the left, I've got two clients, two client processes running on it at once. I've got a web client. i also got an SSH, secure shell client. On the right, I've got my server machine. It's got two servers, a web server and an SSH server. Uh, and there are two connections going on, right? Web client is talking to web server. Secure shell client is talking to secure shell server. Uh, now, notice that they're talking on different ports. So you can think of the, um, well, okay, so web clients, they use, I don't know if I got the port number right, web clients use uh, port number 80. So you can see that uh, that's on, notice if you look at the request, it says request 192.1.1.1, which is the IP address, colon 80. 80 is the port number for web, web traffic. Then secure shell client, it says same IP address, but colon 22. I might have that wrong, it might be 23, I really don't remember, but it doesn't matter too much, you can Google that. But the number after the colon is the port number. So notice that there are several ports being used on two different machines at the same time. So multiple clients and servers can exist on, a, on the same machine, right? You can have multiple clients, web client, secure shell client. You can have any number of clients on there. As long as, they each have, as long as they're each associated with different ports on the machine, you can have as many as you want. Uh, server processes listen to their assigned ports. So the web server is listening to its port. The SSH server is listening to its port. And they only hear traffic that comes in on their particular ports. So the client processes, uh, a client process sends a request to the uh, server, uh, server IP address on the particular port that's associated with that, with that operation, with that uh, application. So if it's a web client, it's going to send it to port 80 because port 80 is associated with, uh, with web traffic. Thank you.